request from Dunkler Superheld, uh, just asking me to do a very basic Maya tutorial. Um, and I've got some up that talk a lot about the structure and things of Maya, um, which um, are somewhat level basic, but I will admit um, they assume some level of knowledge for Maya, so um, if you're just starting out, I thought I'd use this to help you out, and then maybe in a month or so when you've had more familiarity with terminology and stuff, you can hit those up again. But, yeah, this is for anyone who's just starting with Maya, um, kind of a basic thing, but I'm gonna probably do this in a couple parts and try to move fairly quickly, um, just because I know I always get annoyed if there's a lag, and fast forward if a video is moving too slow. So, let me quit talking and we will get started. So anyway, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the entire 3D process, you know, what steps do you go through to get from nothing, basically, to, you know, your finished product. And if any of your windows look differently than mine, or if you're looking for something else, um, generally where you want to look is the display. This displays what is shown. So, for example, the grid is shown right now. Turn the grid off, you can't see the grid anymore. Turn it on. Um, and that, just like, timeline, all sorts of different things, and then you can display how many polygons are in it, especially if you're trying to keep the face count low, and it'll show you how many of theirs there are. So if we just create a basic uh, sphere, we can now see that there's 400 faces, 780 edges, and I'll go and talk about what these are a little bit later. But anyways, yeah, this is very useful. It, it, it's good to kind of look through and um, it'll display all sorts of things on... Oh, I should also mention, um, if we have several objects, let's create a cube. Um, let's cover it up one moment. If we create a cube, if we select this, this will show... This This has six faces, whereas 406 total in our scene. Um, so yeah, that's I just sometimes use poly count. Um, and this is what I have turned on. I find the... View cube helpful. Um, this will let you quickly switch from view to view, um, and we'll frame it up. And you can kind of go to home, back to where you started. Um, and then you want to definitely move around quite a bit uh, with the Maya. So you'll definitely need a three-button mouse. Luckily, you can get them for cheap. I mean, I went over to Office Depot and got a mouse for twenty dollars, and it works great. And uh, once you get into really professional program, you'll want a three-button mouse. Um, I use that for shake and composite and view and Maya, all of those. Um, anyways, so if you middle mouse, you're going to move forward and backward. And we're actually looking through a camera. It creates um, a default camera. So if we create, um, go to create, we can create other cameras and create different animations and um, we can see it's right here and I find if you want to go through that you should have this, these panels here and you go panel and you can look through it and now you're looking through the other camera and moving around and just a little tip um, if you're interested let me go back to my perspective and we can see the camera now um, now, if when you want to move stuff around, um, there's hotkeys that you definitely want to know. And luckily, they're all right next to each other. Um, so that's kind of how it's laid out. And it's a bit different than Blender or other program. But if you select something like the camera, if you, well, by default, if you hit Q, it's on Q, and you'll select it. So you can select your objects. Um, and W is the move, and here we can see we're moving in the Z axis, the Y axis, and the X. You can also grab the thing in the middle and move it based upon um, 
the camera angle right now. Um, which can occasionally be useful, but I recommend it's a lot easier to position things if you're moving them using these arrows. Because then you know where you are and you can actually be moving it way out of place when it looks like it's perfectly aligned, you know. Oh, this, you know, look how far away something like it is. Whereas if I move this, I can move it over, over, get it lined up, and then if I want it right in front, I can just move it back with the red and it's lined up where I thought it would be. Um, so anyway, um, so how I'm navigating, yeah, middle mouse, then if you hit the option and you cl left click, you can pan around and move around like this. And if you want to move just flat in a direction, not spinning the camera, just moving the camera, that is middle mouse and option. So left mouse option. Alt and middle mouse. And here's a little tip. You, um, you can just work in your perspective. Um, but I find if you size down the camera quite a bit and then work through that panel, look through selected, since it's smaller, it'll allow you to pan much better around an object. Um, you can make it even smaller than that. Um, I can go back look through my perspective and show you it kind of moves way around it's, since because what's doing that is the camera is moving all the way around that distance so if you're trying to move the camera will, will spin all the way over to there if it's that big but if it's here it's a much much smaller area it's moving um, so if we make that really small and look through selected um, it's at least significantly better um, and can better move around. Now, over here we have shelves, and these are very useful. You can access them quickly, and they're like these, they're broken up. Um, so we have curves, which is very similar to surfaces, actually, both kind of would be under surfaces, and tools you can access quickly. I'd recommend you know, trying out what they do for polygons and surfaces. It's just the basic shapes you can create at the start. So you can just add a cube. Um, and, oh yeah, let me finish with, um, so you have your select, your move. E is rotate. And um, there's actually, you can rotate Z, X, and Y. And there's actually a fourth, which... Um, unless you know you want to use that, I would recommend using the other three because we have the blue moving in the z-axis. You can move it around like that. You have the red in the other axis in the y and then go on the x. If we do that, this outer one, it'll rotate it and it looks like it's rotating it um, just along the one axis, but it's actually um, in a second I'll talk about using the outliner, but we can look and see it's actually moving it in all three axes at the exact same time. Now why is it doing that? It rotates it based on your camera position, so if we move it like that, it'll rotate an entirely different way in all three at once. So definitely know you're rotating it in all three. Now for changing attributes, um, if we look, there's three boxes here your attribute editor you can go through all these tabs and like the regular one will just have some info but not stuff you use that much this will have transform so we can translate that's like using the move tool we can see you can rotate it um, scale it and then shear um, moves it in one direction that's quite a lot of shear um, kind of moves it diagonally I don't use it terribly often uh, you can also set rotate axis and things but mainly you can you can also control it using this and you should always look through the tabs um, you can set the radius here you can also set how many subdivisions are and that's how many edges there are so we can see if there's only three edges um, along just the axis